right. So let's get started, right? So what one of the things that really stood out to me about this section was, you know, this this particular part is, you know, five ways that we know we have godly sorrow. And one of the ways is called excuse making. And, you you know, you may already be like, yeah, I think I, I think I, I'm there or I have been there. Right. Um, so one thing that it says here, it says, you know, what's the easiest way to self assess your own sorrow? One of the easiest way to self-assess your own sorrow is listen for the excuses. You know what I'm talking about, right? When you talk about your upbringing, oh, my parents made me do it, or our genetic makeup, my grandparents made me do it. Because my grandparents were like this, I came out like this, or, you know, our society, peer pressure made me do it. Um, you know, all of that, right? The devil made me do it. Like that song we heard in the past. So like all of those things, right? It, it's it's familiar. And there's three characters in the Bible that Anton talks about here. He reflects on Cain. He reflects on Esau and Judas, who all three made excuses. And if you read their stories, you or you know their stories, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, you know, I started thinking about myself, right? Because, you know, I read this book and it's this isn't just to tell you ladies about it. This is because I first apply it to my life. I first get like broken about it. I first make changes with it. I, I can't sit here and tell you, hey, listen, listen to this book, do this. If I don't first do it, I just I can't do that. So I found that I was able to apply this this weekend because I was so broken by what this said. Um, and I'll tell you the story in a moment. But there's a part here that says, you know, have you ever heard yourself offering up excuses um, that sound reasonable to you? So you ever heard yourself, you know, saying something and you're like, it sounds like it makes a lot of sense, right? The excuse makes a whole lot of sense to you. But in reality, if someone else heard it and they know you, especially, they'd be like, yeah, mm -hmm, I know that's an excuse. <laughs> and sometimes they don't know you. It's just really obvious, right? Um, so... So here's what it says. This is what stood out to me. It says, where there is an excuse, listen to this, ladies, where there is an excuse, there's persistent sin. Persistent sin. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Um, you know, so think about the different sins, right? You know, you have lust, gossip. Yes, gossip. <laughs> um, uh, deceit bitterness, lack of forgiveness, indifference to evangelism, and pride. And that's the one that got me right there, pride. Because this weekend, oh my goodness, God exposed my heart. So it says, nevertheless, sin remains as long as the excuse survives. All right. So in this particular reflection, um, he reflects on Samuel's story in 1 Samuel 50, 19 to 21 and 24 to 30, if you want to check it out. And Exodus 32, 21 to 24, which is Aaron making his excuse of why there was he was making an idol for the people who were asking for it. And if you read that, you'll see his excuse sounded so lame. But that's how it, you know, sometimes to us it sounds really good. All right. So it says here, excuses rob us of the indignation that energizes our turn from self to Jesus. Did you hear that? Excuse making robs us from indignation. You know, there's a scripture that, and if you, you're familiar with it, what indignation, what alarm. You guys know that scripture? I mean, that's, that's the scripture that talks about what godly sorrow is. It's indignation. It's alarm. And I'm going to go, you know, later on um, in another episode, because today I actually read about all of that. But, you know, I, I want to share with you just personally to wrap it up here. Um, you know, in the weekend, I I got critical. I got in my mind and you could never tell. I got critical of something that my husband told me that he was doing. And so I was like, in my mind, I was like, oh, you're going to do that again? Like it was for a lesson. And I'm like, again? So like he explained it very quickly, you know, we were kind of jumping on a call with a, with our group and, you know, we we're going to do this lesson and, but I, I didn't, I brushed it aside. And then after the lesson, which was really, really good, by the way, um, 
I, you know, I was getting ready for bed and suddenly it just dawned on me like, wait a minute, I was critical. But here's my excuse. Here was my excuse. Yeah, but he explained it really quickly. Like he just, he didn't get into it. So if he had explained it really well, then maybe I would have been like, oh yeah, that's a great lesson. Because once he did the lesson, I was like, wow. I was like, he definitely didn't give me details. So I was like, this is really, really good. But that was my excuse. Oh, my excuse is he didn't give me details. Notice what I was doing. Who was I blaming? I was blaming him, right? And so that is just, oh my gosh. So I just, I, when I read this part, I like tears welled up because I felt like, man, I sinned. Like I sin. And this is something that usually I'll brush off aside because it's no big deal. It's not like I'm stealing or, you know, cursing off of storm or being like really angry and, and bursting in anger, or, you know, things like that. Right. I'm not doing any of that, but this is just so, oh my goodness. Like this is the sin of the heart that nobody sees that he wasn't able to tell and so I just was so broken by it. I was like, oh, so uh, I got on a call with um, two sisters the, the next morning and I just, I, you know, I decided I'm going to actually the morning that I was reading this. So I was on a call in an hour after that. And I said, I got to confess to these sisters when I, when I speak to them. And so I did. And I shared with them what I learned and I confessed it. And you know what that did? That didn't bring them to be critical. That didn't bring them to say, oh, shame on you. Oh, you know, they, they also didn't soften it up and say, oh, it's okay, girl. They didn't do that either. But they did share them themselves. They, they actually were able to share what, that their struggles too, that recently they were critical of their spouses as well. And I was like, whoa. So you see what that does? You know, you share it with someone else. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about confessing in James, confess it, confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. You confess so that you may be healed. You confess it to God, but if you confess it to each other, you will be healed. Why? It feels like, oh, you're getting it out of yourself. It's in the light. It's not in the darkness anymore. It's in the light. Okay, so, you know, I, I don't like to hear, like I used to do this like a long time ago. Oh, but I confessed it to God. Oh, I'll ask God for forgiveness. Listen, God already knew you did it. So you confess to God. You just ask for forgiveness. You don't have to confess it to God. He already knows. You ask for forgiveness, like it says in the Lord's Prayer right? But in James, it says, confess these, it's your sins to each other so that you may be healed. So if you want healing, you need to do that. And that right there will also, that will heal your heart. It'll help it, you know, remain or get softer so that you don't get into that trap of falling back into a sinful life, whether it's a prideful life or whatever it is. It's so important to talk about it unashamedly. Like, yeah, I was ashamed of my sin, of course, but unashamedly as in, I'm a daughter of God. So you know what? I'm going to trust God. I'm going to confess my sin, unashamedly confess my sin, because this is what God calls me to do so that my heart can remain soft and then not live with that shame. Put it aside and keep going and grow from it, right? And that is that is what I want to share with you today. I want to encourage you, stop your excuse making. One way to stop your excuse making is by confessing it. Just say it. Just tell someone you trust. Tell a Christian woman. You don't want to go telling just anybody out there. Somebody you trust um, that you, you you know you know can can keep it. Of course, you know you don't you don't want to tell everybody all your junk, right? But you definitely want to have at least somebody trustworthy. So, ladies, I hope that you enjoy this episode, this live stream that I'm also doing on Facebook. All of this. Um, I'm so grateful that you are, you know, a part of my 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 membership here, and that you listen to my podcast. I'm so grateful for your following, and um, I'm grateful not because of me, but because I want to help you. And I pray that you can share these things with others, so that the gospel can re be reached to more people, and so that other Christian women women can be encouraged and can be strengthened in their faith. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Unveil Faces. Thank you for watching and I hope and pray that it encourages you and inspires you to strengthen your relationship with God daily.